And so we are set and thank you for being on time and welcome everyone to the uh, first of many of our uh, on-demand sessions and sessions outside the school day uh, for uh, your learning and support as we get ready for the 2020 school year. Um, I'm Michael Walker, Secondary Digital Learning Specialist, and today I'm talking about the high school Schoology expectations for 2020. And I wanna say right off the bat that these expectations were developed by a group of staff and administrators and uh, received feedback from others to kind of help uh, align and, and develop these. Um, on the second slide, they were developed in July and the link right here on the slide will take you to the document. I'm gonna go back. Uh, for those that would like access to the actual presentation, you can uh, put in that tiny URL, capital E, capital H, capital S, capital S, and then finish out Schoology, and then dash 20, and that will get you to this presentation uh, as we go through. So again, the link here takes you to a document that was developed um, we actually did some adapting from a document that St. Paul schools had, but put in things that we had uh, found based on feedback from parents and, and students last spring of what was working for them. And so as you take a look here, uh, students really appreciated the week at a glance and posting the daily overviews and things like that. And so we'll go through this, but this document is available. There's links to examples and things within this document as well, as when you were in the presentation, there are links to many of the resources that are shared here today. Um, just to give you a general overview, this is a um, infographic that I created last spring, but many of the things that are part of this are included in what we're talking about. And so if you, on this slide, if you actually click on this image, it will take you to the full infographic and it includes some links to videos on how to create those weekly overviews, how to add events and assignments with descriptions and things like that are included in that. But basically we're looking at a weekly overview posted for students so that they kind of have an idea of if they're going to have a synchronous session or not. Um, given the fact that you at EHS have students who are in the virtual academy, as well as students who are in hybrid, either in front of you during the day or even at home, it makes sense to have, and they're all in the same course, it's important that you build for the distance learning piece. And I think from a pedagogical standpoint, building for DL is gonna be the most helpful way to think of how this is all gonna work. Um, later on, I'm actually going to add a session this afternoon about synchronous and asynchronous and when you might wanna use those two things, some best practice around that. Um, but really building and having a, a solid Schoology platform where kids understand what's gonna be happening, not only for the week as an overview, but then daily having those things posted is gonna be really helpful as you go along. Uh, for those who are actually on this live, if you have a question as I'm going through this, by the way, please pause and, and let me know. And I'm gonna be going through in more detail this course design, but you can kind of see uh, some basics of it here. I have a question, Mike. Yeah. Um, that calendar you have at the top in green? Yep. Is that, um, how did you do that? <laughs> so what I did is I took a, um, I took it right from a Google Sheet or I made a table on a Google Doc and I copied that and then I pasted it in. Okay, and so, so this was a screenshot, or were you able to actually copy the table? I copied the table, and then uh, when you're editing an update, and and I use the update feature, and I'm going to show you this right now. Um, I clicked on updates, and then I took the the table, copied it, and then pasted that into the update. And when you do that, it will it will take that. It'll also take graphics and other things when you're doing updates. Um, 
but I found that copying and pasting from a Google Doc works best. The one thing you want to avoid is using any number, new numbers or bullets in your table until you get it into the actual update because it will invariably put an extra carriage return in and so your bullet will be on one line and everything else will be underneath it. So what I found is that if I want bullets or anything in there, I wait until I've got it actually in the update and then I use the tool there. There's no HTML editing to be able to add the table right in the update in the current form of Schoology, which is kind of a pain. But um, what I'm going to show you here, I took that table, copied it. I went over to updates, course updates, to create a new update. And then right here next to the word post, there's this little uh, word bubble. And when you click on that, you get these options. And one of your options is this bell. And if you click the bell, that's what pins it to the top of the course as an announcement. And it stays there until there's a little link right here that says remove. And once you hit remove, like you're ready for the next week, you can go in and do that. Now, once you've done this once, all you have to do is change the text underneath for each day. Um, so once you've got the table copied in, the first time you can, you know, take take it from the other one and just make your make your changes and or leave leave it that way. Um, but it's probably good to have a separate update each time. Uh, so if you have a document that's called uh, My Updates, either as a sheet or as a uh, doc with a table in it, with the colors the way you want it, with the table properties, then uh, you can just take from there and then keep the other weeks in there so that people, you can have a, evidence that you did say that you were going to have a synchronous meeting last week when the kid didn't show up or something like that, if you're using that for your ABA. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention here, so you can check this box by the bell and that will pin your announcement. And if you check this box, it will also publish it for parents. And, and you should always check that box because uh, no matter what the grade level, some of our students are more dependent than others. And so it's helpful to have that available as a way to, to view that. Um, the next thing we're going to take a look at, uh, any, first of all, any questions about the course update? Okay. Um, the next thing is posting a daily overview as a calendar item. It's really important that each day, whether it's a calendar event or maybe it's an assignment that's due that day, that you include some detail of what the expectations are for the day. And so here the, there's a pretty laid out outline of what they're supposed to be doing that day. Um, make sure that if you can, if it's something that you want them to go into a folder, that you highlight and make the link. Now, again, what I usually do for this is I have a document for those daily overviews. I type it all out, I leave the bullets off in a Google Doc, I copy and paste it in, and then I add those bullets using the WYSIWYG tools up here. And then it, it shows up nicely. But having something that's clear and concise and just a, an outline for the, what the expectations are for the day that's in that overview so that when the student goes in or when the parent goes into Schoology, on the upper right-hand corner, they're going to see up, upcoming and they're going to see for that day all of the things from all of their classes. And that consistency is going to be really important. Um, and as I said, linking to Schoology and having it go right to the item that you want them to do in Schoology is also a, a helpful way to help them navigate to that. Uh, clear and concise language. This is an example from the uh, kickoff, and hopefully you found it clear and concise. But having something like this is really important as, as you're thinking about uh, communicating with, with students. Um, limit yourself to like two font styles and maybe two or three colors max. The more colors you put in and, and text all bunched together, it makes it more likely that things aren't going to be quite as clear as you think they are. And so make sure you do that. The other thing that's really helpful is that if you're changing your font size, 
rather than just highlighting the text and changing the size, change the style. Change it from paragraph text or normal text to header one or header two if you want it to be bigger. And the reason for that is as students are reading, especially if they're visually impaired, the screen readers that they use to read that information, it will pick up the header, but it won't pick up the change in font size. So by having that, it'll help them uh, kind of outline and, and organize things and, and understand things much better. So use the header size if you're changing the, the font size as opposed to just changing the font. And that helps with ADA compliance. The other thing I'll say about clear and concise language is that I know that in the spring, if students were confused about something, the teacher got tons of emails. And so to kind of help yourself at the start of the day, try and make sure that it's clear, concise, that anyone looking at it is gonna understand what, what's expected as opposed to, and especially at the start of the year where there's relationships and things and people don't know vernacular and things quite as well, especially in ninth grade, it's important to uh, be clear on that. And that'll save you in the long run. The next thing with course organization, we talked about that weekly overview. Um, we highly encourage you to have your attendance-based assignments or ABA folder at the top of your course. Any uh, other course information, like a link to the textbook, your syllabus should probably be under that, and then the unit that you're in. And by dragging those and putting them in the right space, it's gonna really help students and families as they're going through the, your courses and, and finding things. Having that consistency is important. And in some cases, you might do some things uniquely by department, but for the most part, try and have that weekly overview on the top pinned as an announcement, your ABA assignments underneath that, and then any course materials that they need, followed by the, the unit that you're in. So you can always have that current unit at the top. There's really no need anymore to have a folder called distance learning anymore because we're not in an emergency anymore. We're just teaching in an online world. And so the unit title, whatever it is, you can keep it as that. You don't necessarily have to have distance learning week one because then they don't know what the unit's about. Keep that unit title as, as it is and that'll make things clear. Customizing assignments. When you're creating assignments, if you're going to have different due dates for different sections, maybe uh, if we end up in block schedules, right now it doesn't look like we will, but if we were to end up in a block schedule format, being able to select the sections to customize and have those due dates set for the specific day that they're actually due is gonna go a long way to help uh, with that. And so just click select to customize. And then when you do that, you can go in and say, maybe this is due on the 14th, this one's the 15th, and things like that. And that'll kind of go a long way to assisting because it's really important for students to know the actual date that it's due so that when the parent says, what day is it due, it's, it's clear. Uh, something about synchronous live expectations. Uh, for EVA students, they're expecting, uh, the expectation is that there's two live sessions per week out of the, uh, the five days and four days of uh, possible synchronous. Um, that was put in place uh, due to uh, concerns that kids were not connecting as well. Um, and so when we're talking about those synchronous sessions, it doesn't have to be a full large group. It could be a one-on-one, -on -one, it could be small group, could be a check-in, could be community building. Um, as I said, I've got a presentation I'm going to be showing this afternoon about what really works best with synchronous versus asynchronous. Uh, really, synchronous is more about relationships and, and gaining further understanding. Asynchronous is really the deeper learning component. But a couple things about that. In the expectations, we've got some uh, graphics here that uh, it's important that you establish your norms with your synchronous sessions. Now, it was really great that when people came in, they had their mics muted and things like that. Um, but some basic things here. Now, one thing that I think is really important to note 
is that those cameras on or requiring cameras on isn't the most in equitable way to go. And I think as we're thinking about equity and racial equity, it's really important to understand that, that sometimes there's unequal access to bandwidth. We have some students with a gigabyte to the desktop and living in a fancy mansion. And we've got other kids who might have a Chromebook and a hotspot living in an apartment. There's kids running around behind them and they don't want to have that on. Um, if you think about us as adults, when we're in a meet, sometimes there's times when we need to, the camera off. Maybe we have to cough or do something. And so having an understanding that they don't have to have that camera on all the time. Um, just because the camera's off doesn't mean that they aren't engaged. And there's ways that you can do polling and other things to make sure that they're engaged, but that's something that's important. And there's some examples of that on here. You know, some students might be having anxiety. Some students might be working, trying to support their younger kids while their parents are both at work. And so it's important to uh, understand that that shouldn't be an expectation that the camera has to be on. Now, that those cover all of the components of things that are the Schoology expectations. Um, I'm going to stop here. Are there any questions so far from what I've said? Perfect. And thanks for those who joined us later. Uh, Amy, just a note, this is the specifically for uh, the um, uh, high school, um, but there is one for middle school that is slightly different than this. And so uh, there is actually an archive of that that I did at Valley View in the Schoology uh, PD course, uh, if you're interested. And this one is going to be recorded as well. And I'm also doing this live, I think, tomorrow with high school or Wednesday with high school staff. Uh, and I think one, at least one other time. Um, so now we're going to talk about some general expectations on how to use Schoology, things that you should be able to do. Um, many of these things are things that we've been doing for the last four years, but there's a couple things that are new that I wanted to point out. First thing, uh, accessing the course, whether it's a current course or an archive course, being able to go to the course menu, selecting my courses and being able to find your archived course. You should also be able to show students how to rearrange their course when sometimes when the courses and even for yourself sometimes when the courses come in from campus they're all jumbled and blank courses get thrown in there or courses that aren't used quite as much you can go to courses my courses and in the upper right hand corner click reorder courses and then just drag and drop and i'm just going to demonstrate that real quick so here i am in schoology I go to Courses, My Courses, and when I get there, I click the Reorder Courses button, and now if I want to move something around, maybe move this one, I can do that. And I can go all the way down, and there's lots of other courses there that I can move to get closer to the ones that I'm actually using quite a bit. And so that's once you've got it moved, you can click the X. And then when I go to the courses menu, you see that that moved from over here to over here. So that's that process. All right. The next thing is course organization. Now, there's a couple different options for Schoology best practice. Some people talk about you know, building it completely by unit and chapters and things like that, which is definitely a, a way that you can organize it. Other people create the unit folders, but then have a weekly uh, folder under that. This one here has for each unit, for each chapter, a folder for assignments, a folder for vocab quizzes, other resources maybe, and it's consistent all the way through. And that consistency in course organization is important. Another thing that's really important, to have an image that represents your class so that when students are clicking on that courses menu, it isn't just a bunch of uh, generic blue icons that they have to hunt and find the actual course that they want to get to. So that's an important piece. The other thing is remembering that you can click on a folder and drag it up or down, depending, to kind of help support you that way. 
Um, the next thing, assignments and assessments. If you're creating an assignment in Schoology that you want students to submit as a, a regular Schoology assignment, maybe they're working on a different file than a Google Doc, um, it's important to have submissions enabled. So that little brown icon at the bottom is going to be there. And students must click Submit Assignment by the due date or an overdue notice will be generated. So that's an electronic submission, and it could be they're going to type in text. It could be they're attaching a file. It could be that they're recording audio or video as a way to demonstrate their learning. There's lots of choices, and it's, I encourage you to include giving students choices on how they're demonstrating their learning that way. Um, but when they submit, it shows up. Uh, that's, that method is actually probably the easiest from a grading and feedback standpoint because you can quickly go through each one uh, very quickly and easily to give feedback and, 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 and grade it right there. Uh, the other way is a Schoology Google Drive assignment. And those are online submissions by default. Once you click on Google Drive assignments and add the document template that every student's going to get a copy of, then that generates that it's going to be in that format. Um, if you're not requiring something to be turned in, or maybe it's an assessment that they're going to do in a different way, but you're going to use the space so you have a spot in your gradebook to record it, you want to turn off submissions. Whoops, sorry. By clicking on this icon to make sure that it's grayed out. That disables the online submission, and it requires them to submit it another way. Um, but if you're not expecting any digital submissions, disable it. Because otherwise, if you don't, after the due date, it's going to show up as overdue for the student. And if it's not something that is turned in, you don't uh, electronically, you don't want it to show up as overdue. Discussions. Um, many of you who were in the summer course know that uh, sometimes those discussions were very helpful uh, to kind of see, A, what other people were learning uh, as people were responding to questions. And one of the other things that we did this summer that I thought uh, had some really rich conversation was having suggestions on other resources. So maybe you're studying a topic and you have a couple of resources for students, but maybe they find some others that might be beneficial. Um, you can have that discussion there and say, hey, if you find some other ideas that are, are valid that you want to want to show, uh, please submit them here. And it led to a lot of rich discussion and sharing some really good resources for our applying the Lessons of Distance Learning course. And, and it also gives some student voice to your class by allowing that to happen. Uh, I know in the past, uh, some of our calculus teachers have had a discussion uh, where if people have questions on how to do a specific problem in an assignment, they can say, you know, it's not just how do I do number two, it's I was working on number two and I got to the third step and I'm, I'm stuck. And sometimes the teacher will respond, sometimes other students will respond to support that learning and it's a, a great way to, to allow for that to happen. Naming conventions. Um, as you're thinking about those daily overviews, if you can include your course title first, and maybe the last name, and then the overview, that can go a long way to kind of helping organize things. Now, if someone rolls their mouse over any calendar item or assignment, it's going to show the course that it came from. But this is just a quick way for people to look and see uh, exactly what the, uh, who is giving that assignment or calendar event and what course it's associated with. Uh, in your document formats, as you're, if you're posting resources, try and stay away from Word files, try and use PDFs. Uh, you can have Google Doc links, but please set them to anyone with the link in view. And one of the things that's really important is that if you go into your Google Drive, and in Google Drive, there is a Schoology, Schoology Google Drive Assignments folder. And it's important that you right-click on that and change the view settings to anyone with the link can view. And that will allow a parent who wants to look at what their kid's doing to be able to 
click on that and see the student work. And it'll only show their, their students, it won't show everybody's, but by having that there, it won't come up as a big question mark or private and the parents like, whoa, what's going on? Why can't I see this? Um, it kind of, and it'll help again with dependent learners being able to see what's going on. Um, and hopefully uh, the helicopter folks will not be calling you all the time. Uh, resources. In Schoology, we've got the resources uh, component where you can access personal resources, add materials. Um, it's really the best way when you finish a archiving course at the end of a year to move them to your materials. So the most up-to-date course is there. Now I know last spring things got kind of unwieldy maybe with distance learning or it was unique to distance learning and maybe you don't want to continue have that, uh, but that's something that you can, you can do. Uh, you should also be able to create a collection and I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Hey Mike, this is yes. Michelle. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, nope, that's okay. I put something in the chat, but I don't think you caught it. Yeah, no, um, I can't see it when I'm there. Okay, so I had asked a question on your previous slide about how you are asking us to make it so anybody with the link can preview or view. And is there a way to make that the default? Right, so, that so you don't always have to go back and click it. So what I recommend is, so first of all, the Schoology Google Drive assignments folder should always have that as the default, okay? Um, and so that you, you wanna make sure that folder is there. And then what I try and do is any other Google Doc that I'm gonna be using in my course, I'm gonna have that in a folder and that folder is gonna be set to anyone with the link in view. And as long as any document is in that folder and that folder setting is set to anyone with the link, then it's gonna work. So if I need to make a new document, I'm gonna to go to the folder first, add that document so that then it has those sharing settings. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, so on here in resources, in my resources, I've got my resources, I'll be honest, it's very unwieldy. I still have things from four years ago stuck in here, uh, all the different courses and things that I've saved over the years and stuff like that. But one thing that I have done is I've utilized collections. And these collections allow me to share things with people. So here I've got AP Econ question banks that came from uh, a different tool, exam view, I believe. And when you create these collections and you create a collection by clicking here, add collection, and then you can name it. And the other nice thing you can do then is you can share it. So here, because it's econ, I've got it shared right now with Steve and Amy and I can add, uh, add people. So maybe if Michelle, you, would you like to see these econ things or this is more for AP, so maybe not, um, but I can add people. And then those people can either edit or I can give them view, view only access. Uh, but it's a way to be able to share something between people if you don't wanna have a full blown group. Now, the other thing you can do is create a group. And when you create a group resources, you can have your PLC group, for example, or, or other groups set up in such a way that everyone can add and share resources together and that can be a great way to, for especially for a PLC. So here's like the chemistry PLC group, which they were kind enough to let me join one time. And here there's chapters and things, resources are available to them uh, to be able to work with. And uh, it looks like a 2020 unit one is, is there so that they're continuing to do that, which is great. And that's a great way for uh, people to share things without having to be administrators in each other's courses if it's put there, then they can just add it to their course as needed. So that's a helpful thing to do with those resources. All right, the next thing, showing students how to submit work. Uh, what I've created on here are two videos. Uh, one is how to do it with a Schoology Google Drive assignment. The other is with, with regular assignments, maybe they want to um, submit via audio or submit a file. Uh, these videos are built in here to, 
on slide 19 so that you can do that. And again, I'll go back to uh, the start because I know some people joined a little bit later to show you the URL for that uh, at the end. But these are, I'm not gonna play them right now. They're built for you to uh, show students how to submit student work if needed. Um, adding materials, you should know how to add files and links and pages to content to your courses. Uh, sometimes when you're adding a page, it's nice to be able to check the box to show in line. And let me quick show you an example of that. So in this district PD modules, um, we've got this folder. And in the folder, um, I created a page and I set embedded a Google Doc with all of our trainings that we're doing this week into that page so that it's very easily accessible for people. Now, the other thing that I did is when I was editing, instead of saying that you have to click on the page to view it, this is the embedded spreadsheet, I set it up to display in line. And by doing display in line, that means it's gonna show up right away as soon as you go into that folder. And so for, uh, for headers and things like that, I added one here for the, the on-demand recordings and things. Um, having that display in line can work really nicely. Now, one issue with that though, is that if you have it display in line, and I'm gonna come to this personal well-being one because there's an example of that. If I go into this class, I've set up completion rules for this folder so that in order to get credit for having viewed uh, Jeff Jorgensen's uh, self-care video, you have to actually click on this to view the item. Now, if it's set up in line, you can't set up that completion rule because as soon as they click into the folder, it's there, you can't, it won't record that they actually viewed it. But by clicking here now, it shows up that you've viewed the item. Even though I haven't hit play yet, it's going to show that I've viewed that item and can move on. Now I'm, of course, going to take the full hour that this video runs to view it for my own self-care and personal wellness um, because I want to learn some ideas from Jeff. But that's an important piece to understand that uh, if you're doing this and you want to use the completion rules built into Schoology, you have to have it set up so that they have to click on it. You can't have it display in line. But that display in line can be useful for labels and other things like that. Uh, creating updates. We talked about using the update tool for creating that weekly overview. And then I showed you uh, how you can click on that little icon next to the um, post to pin it as an announcement with, by clicking on the bell so that it's there. Uh, you can toggle on and off the parent notification right underneath the bell. There's the icon for that. And turning on and off student comments. Now, if you want to turn off comments on something, um, if I'm in here in Schoology, uh, if you go under your course options, editing privacy and course settings, if you don't want students to comment on your course updates, you can change it here. Comment on course updates is only the course administrators as opposed to all members. And so that's an option that you have in there and then you would save changes if you wanted to do that. So that's how that works. Uh, section linking. Uh, if you are working with multiple sections, a lot of times it's a lot easier to go ahead and link those sections together. So when you're building your content, you're only doing it once and then you can teach out of that. You can, all, you can link up to 10 sections in a course. So for things like pre-AP 9 and 10, where you've got 20 plus sections of those courses, you're not going to be able to link all of them together, but you could link your own individuals and another teacher's individuals and then uh, share those with, uh, with admin access if you wanted to be able to share information back and forth and you didn't want to use resources. 
The other thing that I want to show you is something called workload planning. And this is kind of a new thing. Uh, they've had it for a couple of years and we haven't really emphasized it, but I think especially with distance learning, it's really useful as a tool to see uh, the types of things that you can find out. So let's say I'm thinking about having an assessment on a given day. I can go in to workload planning and in any course, you'll see that workload planning link right underneath analytics. And when you click on workload planning, you're gonna see all of your students in the class and it's gonna show by day how many activities, assignments and assessments that they might have in that given day. So you can quickly, and you can set a threshold here that I wanna see maybe if they've got three tests on a given day or two tests on a given day, it's gonna turn up red if that's the case. So it's total students above the minimum. We'll show you how many are, are there. So you can kind of check and see when it might be a good time to give a, a major test and stuff and when it might be a bad time because people have already uh, posted some things like that. Uh, the next thing, it's really important that you yourself know how to change your Schoology profile picture. So if you click on your in Schoology, if you click in the upper right hand corner and select your profile, you can roll your mouse over the icon and actually upload an image. Some people go and find one from Facebook that they like or um, if you contact uh, somebody in the office who handles uh, the life touch photos, maybe they might have a digital copy of your life touch photo if you want to use that. Uh, but finding something other than that blue generic icon as, as your icon is going to really be helpful uh, for everyone, especially in distance learning where you've got EVA kids who maybe have never even set foot in the building. Uh, being able to know you a little bit better and put a more human side on things than just some triangles and, and rectangles and things like that. And this video built in shows you exactly how to do it if you're not sure. All right. At th those are all the things from both a consistency standpoint in Schoology and a how-to standpoint of things that are the general expectations of things you should be able to do in Schoology. Right now, I'm going to shift to setting up your gradebook. So if you have not set up your Schoology gradebook at this point, uh, I can walk you through that. Um, before I do that, though, for those of you who feel like you've got your gradebook set up and you're in good shape, I'm going to jump here first to the first slide. So if you came in late, here is the URL that will get you to this presentation. And all of the links, icons, and things link to uh, resources. There's a few videos, as I showed, built into there that you can utilize as you're going through. So make sure that you've got that. And then the last thing I want to do is make sure that all of you record your attendance for showing up this morning. And or if you're viewing this as an archive, you can still utilize that because you've taken the time to view this archive and you've gotten to this point where you can record your attendance. So you can either type in that URL or you can scan the QR code, fill out the form, indicate that you viewed this either live or as an archive, and then we will record your attendance in Performance Matters and this and recording it in performance matters we're also take care of us being able to send that on to payroll for you to get paid uh, for attending this outside the school day so for those of you who are good with the grade book hi mike yes can you Could post you? that link in the chat uh yes i can try and do that one moment If you had been used, if you had been using maybe Nearpod or Pear Deck, we could click on it, but we yep. can't, right? Yep. Thank you. And I see, yeah, I scanned it with my phone, but I'm not signed into 
in deiner App so ein iPhone. <lacht> ja. And let me get to the last slide. So that's the general one that I just posted. And coming over and getting, here's the one for recording your attendance. Thank you. Yep. All right, for those of you who have got your gradebook set up, thanks for coming and have a great day. For those that still would like to see the gradebook set up, I will go through that at this time. Thank you, Mike. Yep. Take care, good. All right, we're gonna move into the gradebook now. So if you want to be listening along and pull up Schoology so that you can do this as we go through, uh, that's great. First thing I'm gonna have you do is link your sections. And so you're gonna go to Courses My Courses in Schoology. And when you are in your courses, you'll see sections that are common that have the same course number, and you can only link sections that have the same course number. Even though a course may be completely identical, if it has a different name or a different course number, you can't link those, unfortunately. Um, so once you get that, go to the top section, and you're going to click on the gear and select Link Existing Section. So you're going to click link existing section, not add members. And then you'll check the box for all the ones that are there. Now, if you have a section that is grayed out, that is unfortunate, but it means that there is a student in there that is tied to multiple sections. And what you have to do is look, start with the one that's grayed out, and pull up your campus roster and compare the two rosters. And if there's a student in Schoology that is not in your campus roster, you should click the gear next to their name and unenroll them from the course. And once you do that, that will then allow you to link your sections together. So then you check the box and click Next. The next thing, it's going to ask you, do you want a CSV file or other type of file? What this is doing is it's kind of a dummy proof type thing so that because whenever you link, any grades in the gradebook get completely wiped out. Whenever you unlink, any grades in the gradebook get completely wiped out. So we really highly recommend that you link prior to the start of the school year so you don't risk having to double enter scores. The nice thing that Schoology does is they do have you download a CSV file with any grades that might be in the gradebook so that you could go in and enter those if need be. So it really doesn't matter which one you choose. I just tell people use the .csv file just so that you can get on and it'll download it. You can de delete it because it's blank right now. Once you've done that, your courses, your sections are linked and you can click on those sections and you'll see things linked together. Then you're gonna go and select grade setup in that course. And the nice thing is now that we've linked, we're gonna do grade setup once and we don't have to copy it to all the other sections. It's all there for all of the sections that you might've linked. So you're gonna click on grade setup First thing you're going to want to do is add categories up at the top. So you're going to click the plus sign, put in a formative, put in a summative. By calculating by total points right here, that's going to mean that every assignment is going to be what a, 
whatever points you gave it, and the weight of it is going to be based on those points in that category. If, however, you want all of your summative assessments to be the same value so that every unit summative is the same, then change that to percent. And that way, it will always be like it's out of 100 points for any summative assessment. But if you're thinking of doing any uh, additional calculation, like some assessments are worth 1.5 and or 1.2 or something like that, just go by total points. Because otherwise, when you're in the Schoology gradebook as a parent, you don't see those multipliers. And it really gets confusing when people are looking at the grade and saying, wait, how did you calculate this? It doesn't seem right. Um, so it's important, I think, to just either go by total points or if you do want everything the same, to go by uh, percent. Um, so you're going to add your formative and summative categories in the way, the way that you want them. And then once you've got those in, you're going to click on the box to weight the categories and change those. Now, the middle schools go by a 90-10. Some of your departments might be 70-30. Some might be 80-20. Uh, but you're going to put in the category percent that you want for yours. Some people break out summative and do, uh, you know, 60-20 for quizzes and tests. However you do it, that's up to you. Um, but you're going to want to add those in there. The next thing you're going to do is scroll down to the final grade settings. And you're going to want to set this. Most of you are going to want this at school default. Some of you might have a unique grading scale to your department, and that's fine. But recognize that you never want to have numeric as the scale here. Because if you leave it numeric, no matter what points the student has, everybody gets an A. Now, that may be the case in some classes, but please change it to either school default or if your department has, I know world language has a unique one, uh, the FIAD department has a unique one, uh, but for the most part, you're going to be using the school default. You can control the grading columns. If you want to have the total points column there, you can. That's up to you. Now, if you look in the upper right-hand corner where you've got the scales, if you want that school default to come up anytime you make an assignment, check this box. Whatever your main default scale is, check the box, the star for it, so that it automatically comes up anytime you make something new. If you don't, it, I think it defaults to numeric, and then every assignment will be numeric, and you'll have to change it to school default. So just star it here and then it will always be that way when you're adding assignments. Once you've done all of those things, you're going to save your changes. Next thing we need to do once you've done that is to set up the grade passback. Because the overall grade is going to be pushed into Schoology from, or into campus from Schoology, sorry. So to get to the grade passback setup, you're gonna click on the four box icon here next to the calendar icon in the Schoology up in the upper right, and you're gonna select SGY Data Exchange. For those of you who are new, you're gonna to have to click Approve, otherwise most of you won't see this. But then the next thing you need to do is check all of the boxes for semester one and go ahead and check semester two at this point, everything but advisory. Now I recognize that some of you may teach a class that doesn't receive a grade. You can leave those blank, but for the majority of you, you're gonna be checking every box and you're gonna to wanna to do that uh, so that the grades will sync back, the overall grade will sync back nightly into campus It'll go into the final uh, uh, in-progress grade from Schoology task, uh, but it'll kind of help make sure that at the end of the semester, grades will sync properly. 
And then once you've checked all these boxes, go ahead and hit save in the bottom right. When you go into campus and you go into a course and change the task to in progress from Schoology under post grades, you should see that overall grade sinking through. Remember, assignments don't use the add grade column or add assignment from the gradebook or even the calendar. Do it in your materials so that the assignment, actual assignment, ends up in the right folder for the material where it is. If you do it from the gradebook, everything's going to show up in the bottom of your course really disorganized and it won't work well. If you just add a grade column, when you teach the class the next time, that assignment won't be there and you'll have to do it all again. So I highly recommend that if you have something that is going to be turned in uh, not electronically, always do it from materials and then just turn off the submission and have it that way as opposed to ever using the grade column. It helps keep things organized in the course and uh, is a much better system. For all of you, uh, next Tuesday, 5.15 a.m., when you go into Schoology, you're only going to see your Semester 1 classes in your drop-down menu. Uh, we'll turn off the being able to view things beyond that, uh, but that'll be the first day of the term and uh, the grading period, and so we can then turn off your second semester stuff so you won't see that, and you'll only see first semester, and that'll clean things up a little bit for you. But again, you can always click on My Courses, click on Reorder, and move things in an order that works best for you. Uh, grading and feedback. I do have a video here on some nice ideas on feedback for uh, how to do that in Schoology. So you might want to take a look at that uh, for those of you who are interested as a resource for you. And with that, if you have recorded your attendance and everything and you're in good shape, you're free to go. Otherwise, I'll stick around if you have questions, comments, concerns. Thanks a lot, Mike. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. You have a good one, too. Bye-bye. I know. Hey, um, can I ask you a question once you stop recording?